Hey everyone, I'm Jerry. I'm Krobe. Welcome to another episode of Chips and Salsa, whoop, whoop. where we sit down with Intel subject matter experts to get insights into a variety of security topics. Hey, Krobe, I think you'll agree that today's topic uh, about Intel's portfolio cache is both interesting and a little different than the topics we normally discuss. I absolutely would agree with that, Jerry. So what is a portfolio cache? Portfolio cache. Well, you see, Jerry, you remember back when we talked with Stephanie Domas, and she mentioned in that episode, um, we, we talked about security at Intel, and we mentioned very briefly about the long-term retention lab, where we were housing Intel products going back you know, 10 years or more that would allow our researchers around the world to debug, test, and validate you know, security and functional updates across our whole portfolio. You remember that? Yep. Yeah, it's definitely an invaluable resource, uh, you know, especially when you're triaging security issues. For sure. Um, you have to go back. Uh, so today we're going to talk to two of the people involved in designing and building the lab to get their insights into the challenges of building the lab and how it's used. Uh, so first up, I speak with Vivek Tuari, who is a vice president in the Intel Product Assurance and Security Group with us. Uh, and he's also the general, general manager of incident response and remediation. And we talk about the challenge uh, we set out to solve when building the lab. Well, Vivek, uh, thanks for joining me today to talk about the LTR. Can you uh, explain what that is exactly? Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, so LTR is our acronym for uh, what we call long-term retention. It's an initiative which aims to retain a certain number of our platforms from each of our product generations for a certain amount of time, you know, for a long period of time. So, you know, as you know, providing timely security updates is a key to security assurance. And, you know, it's as part of a security first goals. So LTR actually helps us in that since it allows uh, systems and tools to be easily available to our engineers if they need them to debug on some issues or to validate a product update, even years after the product was launched. So these systems are kept in a location that we call the LTR hub. Anyone can, Intel can access them. And, and that and the associated initiative around it is what LTR is. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, and then, so what were the, some of the challenges that we were setting out to, to solve with, with the LTR? Yeah. You know, so you know, around 2018, you know, there was a spate of uh, new security research. And in, at that time, it, the focus was around what, what's called the speculative side channel issues. Now, these were a new class of uh, security issues. And by their very nature, they were very intrinsic to the way modern microprocessor architectures are designed. So they affected a whole bunch of uh, products, many generations of products. And there was a significant effort inside Intel to develop mitigations for these issues in conjunction with the software ecosystem, what we call our mitigation partners. These mitigations needed to be validated before they could be released because of their complexity. And it became a bit of a challenge to find old systems you know, at, at during that time. And so as we stepped back, a key learning from the experience was that our engineers need to be able to have easy access to several years worth of these systems. And to ensure that we've built processes and mechanisms to ensure that these systems are retained, uh, what we call the hardware reference platforms, mm -hmm. along with the devices, the network hubs, power supplies, the software stack that's necessary to use. Um, you know, our, our platforms are complex systems. There are a lot of ingredients and devices, and then you need the full software stack from the firmware, BIOS, the operating system. So all of this is part of uh, what we want to retain uh, in, in LTR. And as you know, we're a large company with a very large product for, to, portfolio. So if you want to operate in this model, there are a lot of organizational and operational challenges to ensure standardization, to pull these all these systems together and the collaterals in one place. So these are the kind of challenges that we address uh, through our LTR initiative. Yeah, big challenges. I, I heard that uh, before the LTR, uh, there were times when we actually had to go out on eBay to find uh, certain older generation products. Is that true? or? Uh, th that is indeed what happened in the past in certain cases, you know. Well, you know, when you have an urgent issue that needs to be debugged, hours and days matter, right? And especially when you are looking at your top uh, experts in the company to help you with, with debugging or solving the issue. So time matters. 
And so getting the right system in the hands of the right people is really important at the right time, right? And in, in that particular scenario, it was proving hard to get the right experts, the systems in their hands right away. And, you know, and at that time, we actually looked around and we felt that it might just be faster if we just asked them to go ahead and just get the systems from online sources rather than us doing a scavenger hunt across our labs trying to track down those systems. So this is a rare thing, but you know it, it, it did happen. Bottom line is uh, we don't want this to become a recurring issue. And that's right. what Elvira says. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? But <laughs> it, it sounds like uh, so what we're describing with LTR is somewhat of a product vault or a treasure trove of products. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does sound like that, doesn't it? You know, I actually like to uh, think of it the way one of our customers described it. You know, um, they call it a museum of Intel technology. <laughs> so, so I really like that. Except that I think the difference is that this is really a working museum. You know, and if you've been to a, like Smithsonian or one of those natural history museums, and sometimes you see, uh, you know, an exhibit where it's really the the paleontologists are working on on fossils real time behind a glass wall. So it's like a working museum. So you know, we it's kind of like that, as in it's a working. Uh, you know, we have a vault of our products. It's a treasure trove of our products, but they are not just sitting in in a storehouse in statically. They are actually in use by engineers. So, so that's that's how I view it. Uh, that's pretty cool. So, uh, are there other factors that uh, the LTR helps to solve? Sure. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, these systems are in one place and they can be remotely accessed from any engineer, any part in any Intel site, any mm -hmm. part of the world. So when we were initially creating this and we were making plans to expand it, there were questions asked on, well, well would engineers really want to remotely access the system, right? Wouldn't they want to just have their hands on it? Because especially if you're debugging something, you know, sometimes having your own physical system, you know, you can go change operating systems, change settings, you know, move yeah. memory devices. You get your hands dirty during a debug, right? So we were worried about whether people would opt, would like a remote model, but once we establish the remote access, the 24 seven technical assistance to do those kind of changes that require access to a physical machine, it, it helped overcome these concerns, right? And that happened just in time because, you know, guess what happened in 2020, right? COVID, COVID happened. Yeah. And so remote access went from being an oddity to essentially a necessity of the way we work. So that came in really handy. You know, another aspect is that so I've been describing hardware, right? But LTR is not just about the hardware. It's about retaining the design details, the tools that were used to design and validate the chips at the time when they were done. You know, products have a long design life cycle. So you need these tools through that period. And then you need to go back to them sometimes for debug and for validation. So the, the simulation environment, the emulation environment. So LTR allows all of that to be recreated seamlessly, you know, years later. And this is an important aspect. And then to ensure that these requirements to the design teams, to the validation teams, to retain these what we call design collaterals uh, and building that into the product life cycle and ensuring that that does happen is also part of, uh, of what LTR helps to solve. You know, and, and finally, we, you know, we, we have what we've started doing in the last couple of years is we are integrating our various security and product updates into what we call the Intel platform update. Is the IPU, sometimes you call it. So the IPU provides updates that are coordinated across our entire product line, and they're important for security assurance of the install base of a product right, in our ecosystem. LTR being a centralized location, uh, these product updates can be validated together. You get the economy of scale in addition to everything else I'm describing. And so the LTR hub has really enabled Intel platform updates to move faster and you know to us to for us to be more responsive and providing the engineers all the collaterals and infrastructure essentially at their fingertips yeah somebody in, intimately involved in the ipu process yes that's very comforting well thanks vivek that was enlightening uh thank thank you for joining me today and uh, to talk about ltr yeah, thanks jerry and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about ltr something i'm very excited about you know, Crow, we get to work with a lot of super smart people uh, like Vivek every day, who, you know, who've worked here for uh, many years in various roles within the company. You know, speaking of you know, super smart folks, I had the chance to talk with Fawn Taylor, 
She's the director of corporate remediation programs on Vivek's team. Um, Fawn was part of that core group that was helped to uh, plan and build out that lab. Oh, I am so very pleased. We have Fawn joining us today. Fawn, can you maybe describe to a little us a little bit a little uh, how this capability is going to help Intel achieve our goals in the future? Yes. So um, by taking all of Intel's products and figuring out all of the various components and pieces and parts that you need to have the collaterals um, available where you can find them and use them years beyond the product launch. You had to basically put in an infrastructure and standardized processes and centralized databases and, and systems where and services that would enable that to all come together. So um, taking one product and trying to figure out what are all the collaterals? There's hardware involved, there's software involved, there's documentation involved, and then there's tools that you need and environments that you have to set up in order to actually recreate those, um, those systems years down the road. What are they? The biggest challenge was, you know, what are they? Uh, get them defined and then start putting in the infrastructure and the processes to actually collect them, keep them, protect them, make them uh, readily available for the engineers and the researchers to find and use when they need them. That must have been one heck of a tracking spreadsheet to orchestrate all of that. Yes, <laughs> Excel's amazing. Um, and, and a lot, a lot of conversations, weeks and weeks of interviews with people who's got knowledge in their head that you can't find on paper or in systems and um, a lot of you know longevity at intel with folks mm -hmm. who have been around for a while and trying to get things out of their head and into records and systems um, to help everyone else support those products they might not have been involved in mm -hmm. I, th this sounds like a really a kind of a groundbreaking idea. I've not heard of this concept. Is in, Intel unique in having this vault around to help us enable our kind of future analysis and research? Um, well, I'm not. I'm not sure if we're unique, but I would definitely say it's it's um, it's been groundbreaking for us for sure. Um, the complexity of our products and what goes into them. Trying to pull an entire company of over a hundred thousand employees um, and the various products we make, how do you, how do you get them all on the same page, get them into a standardized process and flow and the discipline to keep these things in our labs and vaults, as you call them, um, so that we can get them, get access to them whenever we need them mm -hmm. in a quick time. Mm -hmm. now, we're, it's become very uh, prevalent in the news in the last year or so, but maybe you could shed some light. How does the LTR, how is that going to help Intel support our supply chain? Um, it, it's been, that, that's been fascinating. Um, it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg, right? So as Intel's putting in our long-term retention systems, uh, we go back to our suppliers. There are certain tools and hardware that we get from suppliers, and now we need them to extend some of their support for us in order to keep their environments and their hardware alive longer mm -hmm. than we planned. So we're kind of really challenging our suppliers. Um, Intel's obviously a supplier for our customers. So when the customers come to us looking for this level of support um, to keep their the things that we supply to them, our CPUs, our platforms available years beyond the the, the cell, the original sale, will will be ready. We're already ready. Um, we will we will be or, um, or quickly become their supplier of choice because of what we've implemented. It's really interesting. Can you shed any light and what? types of assets we keep in the LTR? Um, well, we keep hardware, software, and documentation. Um, we have a variety of, it's, it's an entire end-to-end -end infrastructure that grabs these collaterals as we go through product development and customer support after launch, where we 
we, we basically tag them, we mark them as um, LTR and we protect them, we keep them, uh, they are warm or cold, uh, depending on what they are and how current they, um, how, how current they need to be accessible to the engineers and researchers. Things go back, you know, decades old. Um, some of our newer products that just launched within the last year are, are part of it as well. So it's it's always it's it is the products that have been launched. They're released. They're for sale on the market. Um, we don't necessarily LTR is not necessarily focused on the pre-launch um, items, but once once they've been launched and, and they're being sold in in the in the public, we we keep all of them. So it's hardware. It's the platforms, the CPUs. Um, the documentation, so architectural diagrams, the design hey. elements, the emulation, simulation, all of the software that goes along with what it takes to create and, and make sure that these products work and we can debug and test and validate and troubleshoot for years to come. Now, I heard an interesting phrase. Um, could you tell us kind of maybe some, uh, give us some insight into the, I know this is brand new, but like the future of LTR, I've heard of a don't scrap it program. Don't scrap it and search and rescue. Um, Ooh, so we, uh, the don't scrap it, obviously um, that was kind of a, a game changer for LTR. Intel has uh, like all companies, you want to get rid of assets that are no longer being used. They're just taking up space. Um, and we would aggressively try to get rid of them. LTR, uh, trying to find some of our products that are decades old, we wanted to find them. So we, we implemented a kind of a, a process that says, don't scrap anything. Let, let LTR look at what you're trying to scrap. And then we, we grab the things that we still need. Makes sense. Um, we also have a search and rescue program for folks that are looking for systems that we may not necessarily have readily mm -hmm. available or we haven't had a need to find them. And they're on the old, we call them legacy systems. Um, if they can't find what they're looking for, they submit a ticket for an, LT for an LTR search and rescue. And we, we have labs across the globe that goes in search of these items. We put bounties, we give rewards, we will do whatever it takes to get these, these <laughs> items in the engineer's hands quickly. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um we really appreciate your time today coming, talking with us, Fawn, sharing about the LTR initiative. You know, thank you very much for coming. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, we appreciate great. it. Well, Crub, there were some fantastic insights from Fawn there. For sure, and this yeah. really speaks to the type of, uh, you know, assurance practices that customers should demand from their suppliers. Yeah, I, I think this really highlights a, a key advantage Intel has over um, a, a lot of folks in the industry, you know, our researchers are able to have access to this and it, it's a lot, big value to our customers. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a wrap for this episode of Chips and Salsa. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>